Building a premium pro system actually depends on a lot of things like the resolution with footage, the bit rate, your average project length and even the format makes a good difference. So we always recommend getting in touch for a quick consultation. However, we'll try to make sure we give you all the guidelines so you have a general idea about how each component affects your performance. Starting off with the CPU, this is mainly depending on the file format you use. If you mostly work with the classic H.264, HEVC or ProRes, you will need a good balance between core count and clock speed, while more intense workloads like Red cameras mostly depend on your core count. So if you're starting out or are a part-time freelancer, Intel's 13th gen is actually a very good option. Its architecture pairs really well with the Premiere Pro. But if you're into full-time filmmaking and looking for something more capable and future-proof, the Threadripper Pro series from AMD is your safest bet, especially with their high RAM capacities, which we'll get into later. The GPU has mainly two jobs, speed up rendering and accelerate effects that require 3D calculation. Now, which effects does the GPU accelerate? That's actually mentioned in the software. In the effects panel, if you see this icon that means it's a gpu dependent or a gpu accelerated effect now depending on how many gpu effects you use and if you're exporting to h264 you can really benefit from having a good gpu although keep in mind the gpu selection comes after the cpu selection so you need to make sure to finalize on a good cpu before you get that 4090 another thing to keep in mind is vram storage this is directly connected to the resolution and the length of your project here's a table so you know how much vram you need for each resolution but if your project length is more than one to two hours you might need double the size mentioned over here. Now, both NVIDIA and AMD's latest gen GPUs are a great option to go for. AMD GPU gives you better value for money, but NVIDIA is overall better if you're also going to use other 3D or AI softwares. But ultimately, the choice is always yours. Now that VRAM is out of the way, let's talk about RAM. Having more RAM simply means better previewing your timelines for a longer time. Take an average of one minute of playback time. Here's the recommendation chart on your screen. Now, keep in mind though, this is for a single layer. If you're editing podcasts or interviews, which has multiple footage layers, this is where the Threadripper platform platform really helps as it can support up to two terabyte of RAM to make sure you're never out of RAM. Now last but not the least, storage. It's a very important part of your workflow because all of your footage is stored on your storage and you need it to be as fast as possible. For almost any editing software, our storage recommendation has always been the same. One SATA SSD for operating system and applications, one NVMe for project files and one hard drive to dump all your backup files. If your budget is limited, you can take one SSD for the applications and project files. The main reason for using different drives is always some background data transfer happening in the OS and applications which can affect your playback speed. Another thing to do is save your cache files on the fastest drive to also increase your playback speed. For the rest of the components, you can simply match compatibility and you should be good to go. But if you're not up for the hassle, you're already at the right place. 